the next time you have some foam packaging, don't throw it out. It can improve your printer's performance and save you money if you use it as insulation. Pretty printer insulation is not a very sexy topic, but it is an important one. Based on my testing, which I'm going to share with you today, it can improve the performance of your printer and even save you money all for very little effort. This video started life as a request from Paul, who runs a YouTube channel where nerdy is cool. Link below in the description so you can check it out. He had been experimenting with various materials to insulate the underside of the heated bed and suggested that I might like to conduct my own testing in a video. Insulating the underside of a heated bed is not a new idea in 3D printing. In fact, it's something I've done before as a part of other videos. Some 3D printers even come with insulation on the underside of the heated bed from factory. So what I've never done before is a proper before and after test, which you're going to see today. So it begs the question, what is the best material for insulation? Paul suggested some different materials I could try in his request, but there was really only one that I wanted to explore and that was the foam packaging that comes with 3D printers and other goods, which normally ends up in the trash. I've actually been hoarding flat pieces for some time, and it's a nice material because in this form it's free, it's very lightweight, it's easy to cut with either scissors or a sharp knife, and if you've got one, it cuts very cleanly with a laser cutter. The fact that it doesn't flare up is a good thing, because if there was a fire on our printer, we don't want the foam to add to the combustion. Just to make sure, I tried this map gas, which has a flame temperature of just under 2000 degrees Celsius. As you can see, the foam melts from the heat, but there's no persistent flame and I don't think it's going to be a fire hazard. The foam that came with your packaging could actually be flammable, so make sure you test it thoroughly before proceeding. On to my testing methodology. For this video, we've got our classic before and after tests, and the first attribute we can test is the rate of bed heating. This one's pretty straightforward. If we print through Octoprint, we'll have a graph of the temperature. And if we screenshot these graphs, I can then drop them into Photoshop, set up some guides and scale the images until the time intervals align. Then we'll have a graph where we can make a direct comparison where steeper means it's heating up faster. The next thing we can test is the distribution of heat across the bed surface. This will be done by using a thermal camera to compare the color and therefore the temperature gradient from the inside to the outside of the bed. Something not often talked about is power consumption of 3D printers. These power meters are quite inexpensive and a valuable tool to have around. We plug them into the power point, which turns them on, and then we plug any mains powered device into it. In this demonstration, I've got a portable heater with just the fan on, it uses just under 10 watts of power, and that rises to just under 2000 watts at full capacity. For this test, if I use the same G-code, starting from the same temperature, when the print is done, it'll tell me how much power was consumed in the form of kilowatt hours. That should be a nice range of tests, so let's get into it. The model for my testing is a humble calibration cube, scaled up to 30mm. It was sliced for an Ender 3, with a standard nozzle and 0.2mm layer height, and also for a CR10 Max, with a 0.6mm nozzle and 0.4mm layer height. The only change from normal in my start G-code is a 60 second wait to give me a good chance to get a thermal image of the bed. Each of these are sliced at ABS temps, that means 250 degrees for the nozzle and 100 degrees for the bed. After starting the print job, I immediately reset the power meter and that means we're measuring the kilowatt hours only for this print instead of any idle time or previous print jobs. The heated bed will draw the most current when it's cold and we can see on the CR10 Max that at this stage it draws around 830 watts. And a couple of minutes later as it's gaining temperature, the power consumption starts to lower. After the bed is up to temperature, you'll notice that the power meter fluctuate in terms of the wattage. And this is simply because the firmware doesn't need to apply 100% heating to maintain the target temperature. Once up to temp, we use the thermal camera to take a snapshot, although this doesn't really mean anything until we have something to compare it to later. For the Ender 3, a much smaller machine, the peak power consumption when the bed is cold is around 260 watts. And like the CR10 Max, this power consumption drops as the bed starts to heat up. Once it settles at 100 degrees, once again we take a thermal image for later comparison. Soon the prints start, and there's really nothing to be done except to wait for them to finish. 
and the second they do and return to idle consumption, we jump to the power meter and record the results. We can see this print was around 54 minutes, we had a low power consumption of 6.5 and a high of 261.8. But the important figure that we really want is our power consumption and for the Ender 3 that was 0.165 kilowatt hours. The CR10 Max has a much larger nozzle and finishes the print 7 or 8 minutes faster. It has a low of 7 watts, a high of 827, and to complete this print, it uses a whopping 0.384 kilowatt hours. We now have our baseline data, and we can see that the smaller Ender 3 is a much more energy efficient printer, producing the same 30 millimeter cube, but only using about 43% of the power. Time to install some insulation, and to get to the bottom of the bed, we simply need to remove any mounts, and then we should be able to flip it upside down, exposing the bare PCB. Here's the theory of what we're aiming for. Typically we have a heater PCB with the bed surface on top, and when current goes through the PCB, the heater heats up. Much of that heat transfers to the bed surface, but as we can see, the surface isn't quite as hot as the underside because it's losing heat to atmosphere. In reality, the underside of the heater is also losing temperature, which makes it less efficient. Our aim is to add a layer of insulation on the underside of the heater, therefore keeping the entire heater hotter and making it more efficient. For this, I only need two things. The previously mentioned packaging foam and some high temperature polymede tape, also known as captain tape, to help attach it. In my case, I'm using 50 millimeters or two inches wide tape. For the Ender 3, I went high tech, using the step files of their printer from their GitHub to export a DXF, which I then imported into Lightburn. Less than a minute later, I had a perfectly cut out piece of foam that matched the underside of the Ender 3 bed. I don't know about you, but I find it so satisfying to pull a fresh part off the laser cut bed. To install the foam, I used doubled over Kapton tape spread around the bed, and then I pushed the foam down from above, applying some pressure to help it stick. After this, I flipped the bed back over, reinserted the springs and the leveling knobs before putting one last round of Captain tape around the edges to prevent any sag. I struggled to not introduce wrinkles, but hopefully you can do better. The flex steel spring sheet goes back on top and my installation was complete. The CR10 Max was a little bit different because it already had some insulation in the middle and this aluminium frame to stiffen the bed. For this one, I kept the cutting simple, using a ruler and a blade, and making the piece slightly oversized to account for the bulge in the middle. Like the Ender 3, I made a series of doubled over kept on loops, which I spaced around the underside of the bed before introducing the foam and pushing it down to help the adhesion. After applying Captain tape to two of the four edges, I trimmed any overhanging foam from the other two sides and taped up the remaining sides. So far I hadn't accounted for the bed mounts, but this was an easy job as the foam is soft so all I had to do was push the screw up from beneath to pierce a hole in the right location. I used some small nail scissors to expand these holes, creating enough room for my bed mounts, and if you do this you have to make sure to not cut through the surface of the heater PCB with the tips of the scissors. I lowered the bed back onto the printer, tightened up the knobs underneath, and then reintroduced the aluminium plate with the sticker sheet on top. Reclamped the top surface and installation was complete. If you're wondering about what thickness of foam to use, all you can do is look underneath the bed. For both of these printers, 10mm foam was pretty ideal. Before you move on, unless you're using solid mounts, you will need to re-level your bed. And if your firmware was running PID for the bed, you should auto-tune it to suit the new insulation. And I'll link to my page in the description that will guide you through doing exactly that. As far as 3D printer mods go, this is about as easy as it gets. So how much of a difference does it make? For our follow-up, we print with the exact same G-code as before and the same ambient temperature of 18 or 19 degrees. With the insulation in place, the peak power drawn by the bed shouldn't really change, but hopefully the increased efficiency means it needs this peak power less often. The first comparison we can make, even before the print is over, is comparing the rate of heating from our graphs. The Ender 3 graphs look a little messy after scaling, so I've tidied them up a little and traced the curves for clarity with this blue line representing standard. And insulated, we can see that the bed does indeed heat up faster, reaching 100 degrees in somewhere between 30 to 60 seconds less time. And it was a similar story for the CR10 Max. If we line everything up, we can see the insulated bed outperforms the standard when it comes to heating time. 
As for the temperature gradient, here's the before and here's the after. And comparing them side by side, I think the color gradient difference is negligible. Once again, for the CR10 Max, here is our before image and here is our after. This time comparing side by side, I think there might be a little bit of improvement. The standard bed looks a little bit darker and therefore cooler around the edges compared to the insulated bed. The improvement probably comes because the center was already insulated and the outside wasn't. So in this case, we've evened things up. So how about power consumption? Our highs and lows are pretty much the same, but our kilowatt hours have dropped to 0.145 on the Ender 3. On the CR10 Max, our print time has dropped a few minutes. Our highs and lows are pretty similar, but most importantly, our power consumption has dropped to 0.343 kilowatt hours. This data, of course, is best represented with a graph. And as you can see, the insulated bed for both machines offers a significant reduction in power consumption. In fact, over a 10% reduction in electricity usage just from this one simple mod. So we have prints that complete faster and use more than 10% less power just from increased thermal efficiency. And in the case of the CR10 Max, it seems like the distribution of heat across the bed is a little bit better as well. Worthwhile results, but there was still one other area I wanted to test. On top of what had already been covered, I was keen to test these principles when it came to enclosures. Before I fitted the insulation to the underside of the Ender 3, I actually ran the exact same test but inside a pop-up wham-bam enclosure. I've already made a full video showcasing this, which I've linked in the description. For this test, the thermal camera was no good, with the best image I could get, peeking through one of the exhaust ports on the top, but the other tests were valid, including the heat up, which showed a very marginal improvement over standard, and the power consumption measured 0.153 kilowatt hours. And this compares quite favorably, not quite as efficient as the insulated bed, but 7% better than the standard. Everything so far was very positive, but there was one last test that didn't go quite to plan. A while ago, I had a series on enclosing and actively heating my Ender 5. Inside are two PTC ceramic heaters. They were a safe option because they self-regulate, and with everything turned on, they get the inside of the printer to 60 odd degrees. So the question is, by insulating the printer, will we be able to increase this with no other changes? So I took my blade, ruler and cutting board and prepared some foam to cover the acrylic panels that surround the printer. The skinniest pieces I used were 5mm, but elsewhere there was enough room to use much thicker foam, quite often up to 20mm. I also added this piece inside the lid to further close the gap at the top of the brush section to try and seal the printer. With this in place, the inside of the printer is now very dark, so I turned it on, preheated everything to ABS temperatures, and set the enclosure to 100 degrees and then waited. And much to my disappointment, the temperature seemed to stabilize at only mid 50 degrees. I think the reason is that previously I had some reflective tape near the heater, the foam probably absorbs the heat, whereas the tape reflects it. I've ordered some more of this tape, and I'm hoping the combination of foam plus the tape gets the enclosure working efficiently. This foam that I used was successful for me, but of course there are more options available, so please head to the comments and share which one you find to be the most effective. We often talk about improving 3D printer quality, print times, and even ease of use, and that's all fair enough. But maybe more often we should be talking about improving efficiency, because the gains here, especially when translated to multiple printers or even a print farm, are really quite significant. Thanks again to Paul for the request. Make sure you check out his channel. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy efficient 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.